Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, it's let's just not like that's not a cool way. I mean, yeah. Not that death is cool by all means either, <laughs> but. Donuts and DJs. Donuts and DJs. Donuts and DJs. Donuts and DJs. And DJ. Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the TVEC channel here on YouTube. And today I got the one and only Taylor Gonzalez, aka DJ Taylor G, right? Yep, what's up? Uh, geez, not much. I got us some daylight donuts. I, I have yet to have these. I guess you haven't had them either. Nope, I've never even heard of them. Nice. So we're gonna try these out, and we got just sprinkle glazed apple fritter. Pretty simple stuff here, but they look pretty good. So yeah, give us a little intro about yourself. We don't have to go all the way into the where, what, why, when and stuff yet, but just give me a little intro, you know, like what you're up to these days, what, uh, how long you've been doing it. I'm on, going on like eight years now, uh, pretty actively since my first year, of, I should say eight years officially, like truly DJing and then 10 years not DJing technically in a weird way. <laughs> I involved Zooms, uh, there was Zoom DJing are you talking this, about the Zune players? Yeah, like yeah, the, okay. yeah, that's how I started was, I mean, that's kind of what got me into it, like, the DJ realm of things, not mm -hmm. necessarily the best, but it worked. It was kind of more of a point click off of a Zoom yeah. in a bar lounge. Would you use multiples or just one? It was just one. Okay. So, like, you know how you could sync them up and, like, you could set the delays of, like, when the next song would start in? Mm -hmm. So, basically, it was, like within 10 seconds so there wasn't any real dead air it was like it would kind of mix itself it was weird it was okay. crazy and it was confusing but yeah it, got, it worked and it worked for a long time actually that, yeah i bet and i mean well because i know that like even bars like even one of our own bars in cedar falls we did that like you know you'd be the dj promo where people mm -hmm. would bring in their ipods and like they would have a list of a short list of songs they wanted to use to win the crowd over or whatever yeah, was it? it was it was like a Wednesday night thing. It wasn't anything like nuts. It was they were doing like free drinks from like eight o'clock to like ten o'clock. I mean, there were drinks that were wells that were on tap. Oh, so yeah. like it was Pre -made like just... yeah. So like it was like you get maybe even a quarter of an ounce of actual booze in it, but people would drink so many of them thinking, oh, it's free, it's free, and then yeah eventually you're, you'll either you're get really, drunk or sick like you're like you're really just drinking like soda at that point yeah. so but it worked out it was cool that's awesome um how's judge how's your dog he's wonderful he's yeah. wonderful he's getting big yeah he's uh topping about 95 right now okay so he's a he's a big boy but yeah it's his german shepherd um i've been following it on snap and facebook when i can he got him when he was a puppy and i uh, love dogs yeah yeah I, well, I rescued him he was they were saying about 10 months and yeah so now he's about well, a year and a half now so it's yeah he's still puppy still <laughs> That's very awesome. much puppy um favorite type of donut do you i mean i don't even know do you mess with donuts hard or i you know i don't go too crazy i don't tend to eat in the mornings yeah. i kind of do like the i know the like morning fast until at least like noon or one kind of thing yeah um, that's usually what i do unless it's it's this. yeah i mean it's not i love donuts donut don't doubt that Better. There you go. Get that glaze. Cheers it. Mm. But it's just not something I'm normally eating in the morning is for donuts. I mean, right. I suppose it helps too that I have kids, so my son's always wanting donuts. Exactly. So you got a, you got a little bonus point there. Yeah, bonus. And but I have to like skateboard twice as much just to try and keep all these these donuts off of me. I know the feeling. <laughs> What's your like other you know go to food? Uh, it can be whole meal like you know sushi pizza that kind of thing or it can be like a, a junk food that you just you gotta have around or a snack food um oh that's a tough one you know i was kind of prepared coming into this idea with mm -hmm. some kind of those questions and now i'm like oh now that you really actually put you on the spot thinking about it it made you take a bite of sugar like yeah uh honestly like i always have in my bag or at least in my car is like a pack of like almonds or like cashews Okay. or some kind of like mixed nuts just to like have something to like snack on yes and i kind of have like six jars through like at my office or in my uh house like of different mixed nuts and like different like things like sometimes you want the dry roasted sometimes yeah. you want the salted, salted and like sometimes you just want to mix them up 
right so. and I was just gonna say like I always have granola bars on me too just in case like uh, throughout the night you start getting hangry and you don't mm -hmm. want to be like yelling at customers just because you're hangry exactly. so yeah I always got granola bars on deck and people used to give me like crap for it but it's been a couple years now and now everybody gets it because like the end of the night they're like I'm starving I'm like want a granola bar well and I also have those fruit leathers <laughs> to kind of give oh, okay. me like that sugar boost so mm -hmm. like it's at least something to like kind of keep you moving yep so. and uh, I, I was just gonna point this out in some way but like you're probably the most uh heavily tattooed person i've had on the show too Quite so possible. far yeah and um yeah that's just the thing with getting tattooed you always want to keep little like snacks and stuff like that on you in case your blood sugar exactly. starts getting low exactly uh so yeah i mean it's just good to have on you absolutely so like we just touched on with the nuts a little bit do you mess around with spicy nuts at all because like i know you said there's a sweet and salty <clears throat> dilemma um, sometimes i do know? i do i kind of mix it up i actually prefer like the those habanero peas okay yep like those things are just perfect like as like a quick like little bonus snack um, yeah or do you do wasabi peas at all yes i've done okay. the wasabi peas i'm a little scared of those because wasabi gets is, is like one of my weaknesses it hits me hard I, you know it depends on the time and place like mm -hmm. if it's just like i can eat a couple i can't like sit there and like oh yeah binge just, through just it kill a whole bag oh, Ooh. i mean that's a palate cleanser right there right um so yeah where do you where did you grow up and where are you currently chilling at? Uh, uh, I am Des Moines born and raised. Uh, I did a small venture up north to Minnesota for about eight years. And that's kind of where like the DJing started and yeah. then it just transcended as soon as I moved back down here. Mm -hmm. It's been about eight years now, so. Nice. Mm -hmm. And so you got your vape over there, mm -hmm. still representing the vape life. Are you still doing uh, you got your own store and stuff too, right? No, um, I, I run a distribution for electronic cigarettes to other retailers across the nation. That's so. it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my dude's about that vape life. So if you guys have any vape questions or you need any of those hit answered, up. hit them you. up. DJ and vape life. Favorite movie or TV show? And it could be something that you're currently into. It could just be a, a you know an old faithful that you turn on whenever. You know, I honestly don't watch a lot of TV or Netflix. Like, I, I'm generally always, like, face deep in a laptop mm -hmm. doing whatever, either edits or... Promo stuff. Yeah, or, like, yeah. exactly. So I kind of get lost in it. I normally have something on maybe in the background. But I'd say go-to favorite movie, and it's a weird one, is probably The Butterfly Effect. Okay. Kutcher. Yeah, I just, like, I didn't get to, like, sit down and watch the whole thing, but it was on, like, a week or two ago, and mm -hmm. so, like, I kind of, like, got to touch back with it, and I was like, man, I forgot, like, how trippy it is. Because I remember the general, you know, storyline yeah. overall, but you forget all the little stuff, too, in it that you're just like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot that scene was in it. Or... It's it's one of those things, it's like, you watch this movie, and it's like, you write, he writes something down, and he can go back in time and refix the future, and it's just kind of cool to see, like... How that timeline works and think yeah. that was a real life thing like, especially since because since that movie's been made the mandela effect and all of those crazy videos and things have been on youtube so yeah. it's just like that whole way of thinking you know like what if something else is going on or what if there's a way to time travel or mess with different realities and dimensions like it's just very prevalent in pop culture right now well i mean it's and just it, like that limitless movie too mm -hmm. with the like the incredible Bradley cooper yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. They still try and sell me that on like Facebook and junk email. Like, hey, the new Limitless pill is here. Get it. I'm like, I'm okay. Yeah, um, I'm good on that one. And if you notice too, I've noticed in the last like few of these that I've done, most of us DJs like, yeah, we don't get to keep up with, you know, too many shows and stuff. Because everyone's like, oh, you've never seen an episode of Game of Thrones or you've never Same. seen this. I've never I'm, seen it. Never I'm like, seen it. I don't have time. I know I would like it and I'd probably really get into it. But I'm so far behind now that it just, it feels too daunting to like, to trick I got you up. Like mm -hmm. I've seen like bits and pieces of episodes, but I've never really sat down to like watch the entire show. Um, it, I I have a short attention span when it comes to that stuff, mm -hmm. so it's like, oh hey, I need to do this. And, and yeah, then I'm ex off. exactly. Like if I don't go to a theater to see a movie, it's so hard for me to sit at home and like actually focus on what I'm supposed to be watching and not get your phone out and mess around with that or exactly. like get food or just whatever. Because yeah, it's I hear that. Um, what's your biggest fear? Switch it. That's a that's a fun one. Um, that's a tough one. I know actually. it like, can be. I don't know. Like, um, like for me, it's it's usually heights, and I can con. So it's a fear that I can conquer, um, especially like incrementally. Mm -hmm. But definitely, like I get vertigo and stuff being up pretty high, and like I just had that feeling of wanting to lay on the ground. You know. <laughs> I you know I can I can agree to that in a lot of senses. Like I don't have the 
fear of heights necessarily. Like I can stand at the top of the parking garage and look down and it doesn't bother me. It's the standing on the ledge that might be a little bit more troublesome, but yeah. I'd say honestly like drowning. Because drowning. like I can swim, like I know how to prepare myself for if the car goes, you know, off a bridge or whatever it might be. Oh yeah. But it's just the, the fact that you know, when you get trapped, you know, like your adrenaline starts pumping, so you don't think clearly, and I think that would be like, yeah, I, I, I don't know, that's a tough one, like a really good like. And none of us have really experienced that much water in our lungs to know what it like, because I've exactly. yeah, I've just heard it's a horrible way to exactly. to go or to think about going. Exactly, <laughs> like it's that's just not like that's not a cool way. I mean, yeah, not that death is cool by all means either, <laughs> but <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Okay, so we touched a little bit on the where, why, and when you got into DJing, and you said that was like more up in Minnesota with the, yep. the Zoom parties and yep, stuff. Yep. Um, so, okay, let's go from that to like then once you probably got, you know. Uh, I moved to, Mo to back to Des Moines, and I had linked up with some people through the bars, um, and it just like, I was like, okay, like I've seen, I've watched it, you know, I kind of fell in love with it like from like, I was that kid at like the high school dances and like the middle school dances that was like over by the DJ booth watching because mm -hmm. I was just intrigued by what was going on. Yeah. Um, so I kind of had that excitement all over again when I moved back down here and it was just, it just kind of all fell into place. I was like, all right, you know what? Like I was a musician, so I kind of an understanding of music and different mm -hmm. realms of that. So I was like, whatever, I bought like a Hercules controller and was running virtual DJ because it was a it came free with the soft with the controller and I was like okay I started on that nice. oh some of those uh, I've recorded some of those sets from back in the day and oh <laughs> you listen to them oh yeah like, I've listened uh, to them and I'm like what was I doing but I mean right. you know it's all about trying to learn to you're always learning to master the craft I mean there's still some mixes that I'm like Ooh, I don't know if I like that Right. And, you know, it's I know just, I'm having flashbacks right now of all the goofy stuff and like just the weird stuff I did and the phases you go through, you know, exactly. like I went through this weird phase at the, uh, the short amount of time I was at college where I like I got into like Russian and like hard like party mm -hmm. like what would you call it? Not necessarily trance. Like hard was, dance? Yeah, kind of. It was kind of more like big room before big room was a thing and stuff like that. Okay. But it was just yeah, a lot of it was Russian or like Russian guys singing in English and stuff. And um, I got it from a foreign exchange student, and uh, so like yeah. But I was just like I'd listen back to those mixes, and I'd be like, yeah, some of these are so you know the uh, weirdest just things. Like, what, what am I thinking? Yeah, what was thing? I on? Like what kind of kick was I on? But <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so yeah, then like from that, how long did it take you to upgrade from your like Hercules and your virtual DJ to? Uh, I switched over to Serato maybe like six months later or so. That's when the it was uh, maybe it was like I'm not sure. It was when the first X SX came out. Uh huh. Um, I thought that's right. Yeah. yeah, somewhere around there at that time point. That's when I did the first switch, and then it just it was easier to do. You know, I, it was affordable. It was just compact, and everything mm -hmm. I needed was right there. And, it's and still, just a, yeah, better quality unit. Yeah. In that oh <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, way more features, way more things. I mean, I probably played on that Hercules for at least a year. You know, yeah, I haven't messed around with virtual DJ too much either. I think I like maybe installed it once and like kind of did the space bar, like just messing with it that way. But um, yeah, I was fortunate enough to have Serato fall into my lap once the the conversion happened. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. before that, it was just all yeah CDs and DVDs, and you had to know where your tracks were and where mm -hmm. your your favorite music videos were. I I did CDs for a little bit for a stint, mm -hmm. and props to people who still do CDs right? like. Yeah, I still see some, some like of the Bill? old school guys. Yeah. Where is he at on this thing? We gotta get yeah. him on here. He says he's gonna do one. You just gotta schedule it. But yeah, that's it was crazy. It was crazy but during that time of point, like switching over. Um artists or DJs that inspired you. It could be back then, it could be now, both. Um yeah, just someone oh. that maybe got you into it or the kind of music, you know, that got you into it back back oh. then. Honestly, I mean, like Beastie Boys is definitely one of those big ones. Um, Will Smith and Jazzy Jeff was like a big point, like where you were seeing a lot of cutting and like just a lot of just cool stuff going on. Yeah. Um, Run DMC, of course. I mean, that's just a hands down. Yeah. And those are still party jams to this day, exactly. which is like still perfect. Go off. Um, I'd say definitely AM. Rest in peace to that guy. I mean, he he really created a, a new concept. 
I mean, I'm sure mashups oh, were yeah. a thing by all means, but like he really made something and ran with it to like its highest yeah. extent. Yeah, I still listen to you know fix your face uh, the fix your face ones with Travis Barker. Mm -hmm. I listen to those a lot, and then like I turn people on to someone who like if they've never heard it or they know who Travis Barker is and don't know who DJ mm -hmm. Amherst, any of those kind of combinations. I'm like, this is just about to blow your mind though. Exactly. And yeah, it's. Yeah, gone far too soon, but it's amazing at what he, the influence he did have on the scene, and now that, yeah, mashups are just such a prevalent thing, and it's an art form in and of itself. And Exactly. And he, it wasn't just so much a mashup, but it was also just taking, you the, know... The, the, like, the parts and pieces to, like, just re-entwine. Exactly. Like, really utilize Make the older music. stuff new again, and just, yeah, exactly. exactly, mixing it all around. And another person who was really cool at doing that, when they, especially when they first hit the scene, was Girl Talk, with how much they would just, yeah, yeah. you know, the Girl Talk was even crazier, because there was, everything was pitch bend and, like, synced up to match tempo-wise, but, yeah, that, it, it gave DJs, I think, a lot of new ideas and I agree. ways I agree. to spin records. Um, what's your favorite, you know, genre to play when you're playing out, and or, like, if someone gave you an hour set and said, you know, you play whatever you want? Oh, man. Uh, you know... I stay very pretty diversified on like what I like. I try to play and incorporate as much as I can into every set. Um, I've been on this weird like kind of like tropical house meets like funk era. Like it's just okay. kind of this weird. It's just this weird like just very. I don't even know how to explain it. Like it's just a unique sound. Like in a, it, I don't know. It's hard to explain what like what it is or who it is. It's yeah, just, yeah. I can envision it's what just you're got, saying. Like, it's got like just a like a fast pace but it's got a, like it's true to like kind of R&B soul funk feel to it just nice. kind of keeps it unique and fresh and it's kind of different mm -hmm. kind of like that tropical house that has like a little bit of horns and like some saxophone in exactly it. yeah 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 maybe a guitar like it, it's like just perfect guitars. like just that groove like just kind of just chill yep I know exactly what you're talking about um what's like uh, a palate cleanser then for you uh, like I said in the couple of the last ones or whatever, like it's always like metal or old, you know punk stuff I listen to in high school for me. Like I go back and listen to a lot of those favorite things. Um, I do. I try to incorporate a lot of pop punk into my sets too. Oh, yeah. Um, There's been a lot of good remixes of that stuff coming out lately. You know, too. I do. I do just straight cuts, mm -hmm. and I do. I just do short edits of them and just rip through them, and it's all just playing off of the drum tones. Yep. Like just. I don't know, it's just like, that's kind of my refreshing cleanser because I'm like, okay, this reminds me back of like when I was playing music and like mm -hmm. seeing these bands play live and even opening for some of these bands, like it's just kind of like that refreshing to be like, yeah. hey, I'm not just DJing now at this point, like it's like kind of living the, the past days. Mm -hmm. So that'd be my kind of thing. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, what's like the craziest DJ story or like the strangest gig you, you can think of off the top of your head? craziest one was I was doing a patio party and it was just solid you know Saturday night just good time everything's going well out of nowhere just downpours like uh, straight downpours and people are just still going with it like going strong and I'm just like this is like kind of like the coolest thing ever just to see that you know even though the rain normally like just makes people scatter uh -huh. they're just going and like that was probably pretty cool uh, it's like a I'm thinking of like the movie Step Up or you know any of those dance movies where they yeah. start doing a rain yeah, exactly, dance scene. Exactly, exactly. Like I was like, come on, where's the choreography? Let's go. Yeah, Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> craziest or wildest. Um, or I mean, it could just be you know too that like that customer that is for some reason needs to hear their song right now or they're gonna get cancer and die and it's your fault. You know they're angry about it. Um, I it could had be any. I had one of those kind of scenarios. Um, where, like they just kind of kept hounding me and hounding me about a song and I'm like it's like 12 30 dance floor is packed and it's like going from like anywhere from 120 to one you know 128 you're at that point you're just on power hour and they're like can you play I don't even remember what it was but it was something just super slow and just depressing and yeah. I'm like uh no right and they gave me all these reasons on why and you know try to use like oh I know the owners blah 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 and I'm like I, that's fine I understand that like I respect that if you do but they're gonna probably tell you like it's go time like this is time to be doing this like, yeah I've so. never I've never understood 
that too. And I guess it's just because we come from the opposite side of the coin. So we don't, like all of us as DJs know not to go bother other DJs and like, mm -hmm. we got to hear our song. You know what I mean? But like for other people, I've just never understood why it's like so make or break for some people, you know? And it's like, if you really did know the owner or the manager or something and you knew how club life worked and stuff, then you would understand why like maybe your song isn't going to work next or, you yeah. know what I mean? Or maybe it's not appropriate for the venue in general. Like it just depends. And so yeah, that always blows my mind. I mean, and I try to work in like, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty friendly with requests. Like, you know, I mean, Same. If, if, like, it, if it doesn't make sense or make make right like a, you know I'll tell him it's like I'm sorry that just doesn't really fit what we're doing or it's or like I know. don't have much stuff like that or like yeah like exactly that kind of and like, I mean I always try to like make it the best situation out of it you know generally if I say like I'm gonna play your song like I'm yeah. gonna play it it won't be right away exactly it'll be when it all kind of makes sense with like the story that my set's telling exactly so yep and that's just another thing that people who've never DJed uh, and you don't like know much about bpms and stuff like that they just don't understand it because in their mind the song might have a lot of energy or mean something to them but as far as like the bpms and the actual energy of the music currently being played it's just not it doesn't match up at that time and i'm the same way you are if i say i'm gonna play your song especially if you've heard me play the song before and you come ask me yeah like i'm yeah that's gonna happen like i'm here to make you happy and please you as well but there's sometimes you just get those people that <laughs> just, yeah like borderline want to throw drinks at you and like they flip you off and stuff and I'm like what is this like my, my favorite one is the like the, <laughs> when somebody comes to you, up to you and tells you to play a certain BPM because of a certain movie oh I haven't even the, the Zac Efron oh we were yeah. talking about that with Goldman he said like, it's not a bad movie I said I haven't seen it yet. it's not it's not a terrible movie but do like, they talk about BPM yeah, stuff like all the time they, in that movie yeah they talk about they have a section in it and I'm just like Oh great! This is what we're gonna talk about. This yeah. is where we're gonna go with this. Like, uh huh. You know, it depends on the type of situation, the vibe. Where I feel like the one twenty eight thing is like a true statement. Like, yeah. If it's a Saturday afternoon, you're not trying to get them to go rage by all means. You're exactly. Just trying to maintain and keep them. Yeah. So. Exactly. The one twenty eight big room stuff definitely has its its time and place and in the middle of the day it can get weird unless that's the kind of, exactly like I said it, that's it the kind of party you're supposed yeah. to be spinning for yeah. and that's what's going on exactly then sure but just yeah when you're throwing the hardest stuff out in the most random times it's silly <laughs> what's your favorite piece of gear like right now something you currently have something you're like wanting really bad just um my favorite right now is still my s9 yep my pioneer s9 it's just old it, faithful it's old faithful yeah. I mean I've bought two more since I got my first one and the one that I, my first one's still running and it's still one I use. It just doesn't hurt to have a backup for those rough times. Yeah. So. Or just in case, you know, you want to leave one in the trunk so it's ready to go all the time and you want one set up at home so that's ready to go exactly. all the time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it helps. Right. Um, yeah, do you produce any original music? Uh, not so much produce. Uh, well, I should, I, I'll go back to that. Um, I do a lot of like re-edits, just like quick edits. Yeah, that's uh, the follow tracks. Like, I mean, it's just... Remixes, mashups, edits, bootlegs, etc. Exactly. Like it's more or less just like I try to cut down songs down to like anywhere from like a minute fifteen to a minute forty five, just yeah. so I can give you the verse, the chorus, and I'm on to my next one mm -hmm. and still have at least enough, you know, in your four bar, eight bar intro to kind of keep the things yep. moving smoothly. Exactly. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, Producing wise, like overall, I don't do like. No, my own or any you know, of that I mean, stuff. I do all my stuff, my edits in Ableton now. Okay. Um, I was doing Logic originally, and I don't know. Ableton just got a cleaner platform. And yeah, I've never, I'm not, I haven't got to mess around with Logic too much. I've just been on Ableton and just kind of. At first, you know, it's like I couldn't figure anything out about it, and then like once you get figure more and more and more out out about it, you get a little more comfortable, and then once you get comfortable in one digital area workstation, they all kind of start. I feel like the same, Logic but. is a better one for like live studio recording. Mm. Like that's just at least in my perspective of it is it's better for a live studio recording. Um, as for Ableton, I think you know in the media realm that we're looking for it, to use, it just seems a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. There's been times where like I've because like sometimes you're like oh it'd be just easier to do this on the decks you know on the fly as opposed to like taking it into Ableton and cutting it yeah because you're like I know exactly how I want it done and or maybe there's like a, an actual oh, yeah. turntable-ish trick you need to do with it. 
But then there's other times where, yeah, you can just slap and edit real quick in Ableton. Or you can even hear a couple of songs and you're like listening to one and you're like, man, that one's going to go so well, you know, just. Exactly. I mean, I try not to do like pre-recorded like mashups like that because it's just. It takes the fun out of doing it. It takes out the and, fun out of it live and then like that moment when you get it right, like you're like, yes, I did it right. And then uh -huh. the times where you're like, eh, I messed that up. But now I know where I need to make sure I tighten that up at. Yep. So it's like, it's like I do use some mashups a lot. Like pre-recorded that are you know edits that other people have made but I mean yeah it just kind of it depends on like if it just works out the right way or if it's just the right version that it just sounds right with what I can do with it I mean yeah I'm, I'm pretty much the same way and the only like there's the, the other time is there'll be times where I have like three or five remixes of like one song and mm -hmm. I'm like I just want the like the good part of that remix you know the good exactly. part of that one. and so then I kind of mash that all up exactly. into a different edit exactly yep um so yeah, do you have any advice for people out there that want to get into DJing or like advice on how, you know, to get booked, to go about that kind of stuff? Um, first advice is, I mean, it's just spending time in the bar, the club, the reception hall, like whatever it might be, like just spending your time and making everybody know your name, know your face and recognize you. Like that's a big part of it is, you know, it might become a thing where they might need a DJ at one point in time and like they're like oh hey I know that this guy does it um, you know and then hours and hours and hours in your bedroom just practicing wood shot play into the ghosts Thank like you. just play into ghosts I mean and that's you know if you can play a, an amazing set in your bedroom you can play an amazing set in front of five people and when you play it in front of five people you know hopefully you get up to 20 people and it's yeah. just you know I, I mean I know we both started nights like our own nights at clubs and it's just like five people showed up 20 people start to show up uh -huh. after a couple of months and like it is just you know it just grows and it grows and it just practice 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 and just yeah. introducing yourself to and people. sometimes it's harder to actually entertain those five to ten people than it is a giant room because exactly. once, once the room's full and everyone's you know here the place is packed there's cover that everyone's been drinking for a while everyone's having a good time they don't they're not going anywhere but those five to ten people like you have to cater to their attention span and try and keep them interested. That's why whenever we get started with like bachelorette parties yep, or yep. or birthday parties or something, like we uh, us open format club nightclub guys usually know right what to go to for these kind of like exactly. I mean, and, and the hard part is is like you know after say like eleven o'clock ten you know eleven thirty even if that mattered like once the bar fills up the DJ doesn't matter it's just background for the most part yeah. like. It's that first, like, you know, that 9 to 10, 30, 10, 45, where, like, yeah, it's, all on, it's, it's all on you to convince who's here to stay and, yeah. to, like, get the people that are walking through by the doors to, like, get in here. And yeah, I call it building trust, too, you know, exactly. because the, the people that are here early want to know that, like, yeah, it's going to be a smooth night. You're not just going to play obscure, you know, B-sides all night long. <laughs> Whatever else. I mean, hey, if it's a B-side party, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, if now. it's a B-side party. Bayside. <laughs> um... Yeah, what are your, okay, let's not skip that one. Where do you see DJing taking you in the next three to five years? And I know you've been working on some things behind the scenes. Um, I've got a few things that I can't really dis I know. just I know. You know, put out there, <laughs> but uh, I've got some cool things that I'm hopefully gonna start bringing to, to the market. And if all goes well, I'll be able to bring more people and get more people involved with it. Um, I, you know, for me, you know, I'm I'm happy with what I do. I play regularly throughout the city, um, and including the Ames and Iowa City. Too. Ames, Iowa City. Uh, go to Minneapolis every once in a while. I go up there this weekend. I don't nice. know when this will be posted, but or last weekend, depending on when this gets posted. Um, so, you know, I'm good with just doing minimal travels, and I'm happy playing where I do. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have a lot of great opportunities since pretty much the get-go when I was spending my time at those bars and those clubs those lounges like just day in day out like yep. just showing my face and I mean I've been blessed in that sense and I'm humbled by it to still be somewhat relevant like I'm just kind of low-key the guy in the background just there um, but I, uh, I have a company now that was kind of crazily founded and it just kind of worked and been just growing steadily and adding people to the roster and it's been good we're in like 13 or 14 spots now which is nice 
Yeah, it's been work. It's been work. So oh, it's yeah. like juggling people's schedules and flyers and staying up on promotional stuff. It's uh, it's crazy, and I'm cool if that can keep growing. And you know, I I used to be that guy, and I think you were too at one point in time, where it was like you're playing Wednesday through Sunday, and then it's you know you get maybe Monday, Tuesdays off, yeah. and it's rough. It's it's fun yeah it's definitely fun especially if the you know all the nights are different and they're moderately busy to keep you keep you entertained exactly exactly um and a good thing you said uh good takeaway anyway that i've been wanting to say somewhere in this series is that uh because i feel like a lot of people learn this lesson the hard way but what you said about like you have stuff going on and you're not going to talk about it the best thing to do is just yeah do it don't talk about it because like so many people i find like get too hyped up on their ideas or whatever and like it's almost like as soon as you tell everybody the idea, then you kind of blow your load and like the fun of it's gone, the secrecy and the like. Exactly, I mean, and, and the best way to think about it, and this is how I've always thought about it is, you know, I always try to practice or try to do something to continue my growth and it's, my theory is, is there's somebody in their garage trying to eat your lunch. Oh yeah. And so I don't want somebody to eat my lunch, so I'm gonna keep doing and keep going and keep exactly. doing my thing to, make sure I'm staying where I need to be so yep. perfect mentality in my eyes anyway <laughs> um, yeah what are your thoughts on and we touched on it a little bit but thoughts on like the Des Moines Iowa Midwest scene in general because I know you you get around and like this yeah I mean it could be just the clubs it could be festival shows but just you know thoughts on the scene where it's going um, I mean I think the scenes doing pretty well um, there's definitely been a big change in the dynamic I mean over the years I mean there was a good amount of time where kind of like that like house EDM era of stuff was kind of really super strong then it kind of faded out and then it became like really popular again um, I feel like we kind of have a good mix of like everything across the city like across mm -hmm. the Midwest especially of you know you have Latin nights you have house nights or EDM nights or country yeah it's, like it's so I mean so you have so much options out there now that are so open to different formats that I think you know as long as the, everybody keeps progressing forward it'll maintain that of course mm -hmm. I really want to see like a true like hardcore country like DJ nightclub spot okay I think that would be really fun like that's actually something I should mention like I really want to do a country night like yeah. really want to do like a full-on like like kind of like the line dance ones that like I used to do with them, kind or of, like, like yeah, even but grittier like, in that. Yeah, like I mean, I want to do like a straight up country night where it's just like a big party. Think of like taking a nightclub and turning it into a country club, and like yeah, with actual cutting, or, like taking the like, bonfire out from out there and bringing it. To exactly. <laughs> like I just want to take like that kind of concept and like bring the country aspect party to a nightclub feel, mm -hmm. where you're actually like scratching and cutting and doing fun plays with like songs because I think there's like a, an element of that ah. like that crowd is like some of the best people to play for because they're uh -huh. the most fun people out there uh -huh. but they are the ones that sometimes get very uh, very sticklers for like wanting their line dance song yes, that, and like don't true. mess with their that, line that dance is, song that is like, very true you they don't not... care if things mix in and it just runs like seriously they'll do the same line dance for like 15-20 oh, yeah. minutes oh, yeah. they don't care yeah, no, they but don't. if you like backspin or do something wrong that throws off the dance then it's like game over oh yeah oh yeah or if you play that 20 minute song and then play the same dance again the next song then they'll be mad because <clears throat> you can't do that but if it's just you can mix it forever and they'll keep dancing too exactly it. exactly i don't know it just it's kind of one of those weird things like i've always just wanted to do a country night just because yeah and i think it'd be a challenge it'd just I be totally fun it, challenging man. because it's not my normal element uh -huh. like, i mean i still maybe drop a couple of country songs here and there but i think just challenging myself to do something different every night would be really yeah, I had this, I'm getting this vision in my head of like, uh, yeah, a mix between those kind of like traditional country nights with the line dancing and then like with the, the newer stuff that is like, you know, <clears throat> uh, a little more tinged with hip hop and this and that. It has exactly. like the more bass to it. Yep. So then you can just kind of get, you know, yeah, like you said, grittier with it. And then everybody's kind of wearing like, you know, wife beaters and blue jeans and like <laughs> straw hats. And like, yes. it's just, it's, yeah, like I said, take the bonfire from out there, which we all do and have all grown up with in the state of Iowa or, or Nebraska or yes. Kansas or any yep. of those and bring that to the club. Like, there's going to be chew spit everywhere, but we'll deal with that in the morning, you know? <laughs> um, we'll let the cleaning crew deal with that exactly. one. Exactly. <laughs>
Well, dope, man. Thanks for doing this with me. Absolutely. Just uh, now's the chance for you to plug upcoming gigs and events. And I know you said something about this being posted. I think it's going to be posted Sunday. Okay. So anything so, coming up? Um, rest of April, May, June, July. I have a full calendar up until I haven't posted May yet. I will post that here probably in the next week or so. Um, you can find me on all my social media platforms at www just one link dot com or sorry dot net slash taylor gonzalez and of course all of his links will be down in the description so go down there click those hit him up follow him on his things on his social media profiles Absolutely. visit his website book and him my website actually <laughs> takes you to all my to all your stuff so you go to the this is just Perfect. one link and it's That's... it pulls up with my email my facebook my instagram my twitter all those mixed clouds That's all dope. that stuff and just one one and done. Well, I'm definitely going to have to check it out and because then I might have to, to use that. It sounds wonderful. nifty. It's yeah. so nifty. So, yeah, all your upcoming events and everything they can find on there. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, what else? I mean, oh, yeah, he's always doing crazy stuff. You'll see him at the state fair probably. Yep. I mean, he's I'll always doing there. state this fair stuff. My, this will be my seventh year. And if he's literally not hiding somewhere down here, like working at Copper Cup or one of the places down here, then you'll probably find him out wandering around. And if you're a fellow DJ, he usually always comes out and says, what's up to you, shakes your hand. And yeah, it's I always- I try to like, you know, it's not often that we get nights to do that. And like exactly. when I can, like- It's like that one night I got off, I was like, I gotta make sure I see all the homies. Cause yeah, it's, it's like, like it's I never like, get you one gotta, off. You gotta, I wanna, like, I wanna hear other people spin just uh -huh. because like, it's nice to hear something other than what I do, yep. and it's just kind of a refresher. I mean, you can watch, pod, you know, listen to podcasts and watch like videos online, but like it's not the same. Like it's just kind of cool to hear like what the homies are doing. I mean, oh yeah, and just see the different you know crowds that each venue down here brings in because yeah, they're all it, it's, have their own like, niche crowds yeah, and no, stuff. No one really has like the same like feel or theme like to it essentially. Like yep. you have places that are similar in concept, but when you walk in, it's a whole different element. I mean, exactly. And that's kind of what's great about Des Moines, especially like it's so diversified. Yeah. And like that, especially downtown. Oh yeah. Like, it's so. I unique. mean, downtown, and then like yeah, in the spring and summer, you can walk to East Village easily, and then there, East Village has so much more to do too, which exactly. we've we've shouted out Lime and George and all them, and like. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, so yeah, guys, come downtown and party with us sometime. Oh yeah, we're in Shags, by the way. If you can't yeah. tell. Yeah, we're, 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 we're where I work every weekend. That's the DJ booth right there. Um, Shout yeah. out to Troy. Shout out to Troy and everybody here, the Shags fam. Thanks for doing Absolutely. this with me. Appreciate it. Another episode of Donuts and DJs in the Book. What's up? Guys, smash that like button. Share it with your friends. Show them this badass series. Smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any more. And until next time, DJ Taylor G, T-Beck, we yeah. out.